welcome to another exciting product review from Gobbler Ridge Farms. And today we are in the Gear Guide 14 foot by 14 foot TP. And last night it got down to a wind chill of 25 degrees for a George boy. That's called cold camping. And uh, how are you doing over there? Are you cold? Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, I think he got, uh, he didn't get cold until I woke him up this morning. But anyway, let us get out of bed and we'll start this product review. <laughs> Whew, maybe a warm cup of coffee might be in order before we start it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> time to get up. Okay, around the perimeter of the TP, there are four windows here, and they are strapped down here on the uh, corners, well, left and right, and up here you can roll the window up and put it up there if you want to let more daylight in during, during the day to read or do whatever. All right, Jacob, roll that up, or at least unhook it. Yeah, and then tap on that plastic there a little bit. And right there, you can see that the window is made out of a plastic. We'll let the light in, uh, but in the event of a rainstorm, you know, the rain should roll right on off of that plastic. And you can stay in here nice and warm and dry. And you can do these flaps from the inside so you don't have to go outside in the rain uh, to open them up and look out. Now the TP is a center pole design with this one pole here in the center of the TP. As it comes up here, this is a really nice feature. It has a little draw tie right there where uh, during the summer when the bugs and all may be out, you can cinch this down, scoot that up in there, and then it has this no-seam mesh to keep the bugs out, but it allows for the ventilation and some of the condensation to escape up up top. It's also good if you're using a heater during the winter, you can uh, vent this and, and get a little airflow in here so you don't run out of oxygen. Now, attached to the top of this pole though, there's a, a clip here, and as you can see, we hung a little uh, light last night. Now, I don't know if this was by design where this uh, comes right back into the uh, pole, and you can see we're in a bit of a high wind situation. So we'll see how these grommets hold up on, on this tent. Uh, but I don't know if this was turned around backwards or not. I believe I would rather have this hook facing out in this direction so we can hang stuff as opposed to moving it out then putting it back in. If you put anything too handy on, uh, too heavy on it, uh, this would be a pressure point pushing into your pole. So I don't know if this is by design to have it go this way, although I would prefer to have it out the other way and then when you put something heavy you'll have this back piece here being supported here so that may or may not be a manufacturing defect but uh, in any event for a light this uh, a light this light I was gonna say that's uh, <laughs> I didn't write the script here but anyway for something uh, uh, this light it's not gonna you know really be a problem all right now a lot of your TPs you know come without a floor in there you can add a a pan uh, later as a as an option and make it somewhat modular this TP does uh, come with a solid floor on here uh, you know for us we kind of like that keep some of the ground moisture and all off of you and uh, so it's you know your traditional uh, you know tent type type flooring down here now you may notice over on the floor, I've got lights, we got some hot hands, uh, I've got a charger for my phone, uh, all kinds of little knick-knacky things uh, like that. I've got my bushcraft knife there. And the one thing that I noticed is uh, around the, the edges here, there are no pockets. You don't have any pockets over there, do you? <laughs> See, there aren't any pockets on the inside. That might have been a, a nice little touch, you know, to have something to you know, put your cell phone where you can uh, easily get to it 
uh, your cell phone charger, your car keys, things of that nature. Uh, but there are no pockets on the inside of this tent. Last night I was putting all my stuff over here on the ground, which actually wouldn't be very good. Yeah, that's not too bad an idea because it's putting it over there where you uh, yeah. where the tent is lower to the floor and you're not going to be walking. I put mine out in the walkway, so your idea is a little more brilliant. I guess granddaddy is the one who needs the pockets, not you. Yeah. <laughs> pockets would have been nice on the tent, but uh, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have them. That's just part of the review. Now this is down in, in one of the corners and uh, there are a number of tents that uh, have a little opening right in that area where you can uh, run a power cord out and uh, you know let's say uh, let's say for instance that you're in a uh, campground and you're not out like we are in the just out of the forest uh, and, a, and a lot of the uh, tents have a pocket there that have a flap over it so that the water comes over and you can actually run some power in so if you need to charge anything uh, if you want to watch some TV at night or whatever the case may be or you need to charge a cell phone uh, and uh, I didn't find any of those type pockets around here now in our situation last night when it's 25 degrees out uh, I've got a uh, Mr. Buddy uh, or Mr. Heater Buddy and uh, where that would have come into uh, a good utilization is that I could set my propane tank outside, run my hose through that opening instead of an electrical cord, and then I could have run the heater uh, on the on the inside. Uh, doesn't mean the tent's not uh, you know not a bad tent, but uh, that is one feature that I think would have made. Uh, the tent a little better and uh, more useful for a campground situation or uh, I don't know if you would call it actually boondocking but uh, you know camping in a more rustic environment. Now as far as the center height is concerned uh, I'm right at six foot uh, one tall and well I'm wearing a hat so you know, I'll take my hat off but in any event if I get over here next to the pole you can see I've got all the way up to there so I still have a, a substantial amount of headroom uh, to stand up in here. So with this having the, the center pole here, you know, you're not going to be able to put your mattress right up against it. You're going to have to put your mattresses out to the side, uh, which I find is beneficial because uh, if, you know, if it's rainy or you come back from the bathhouse or, you know, you come back from swimming, whatever the case may be, and you have to change your clothes, Trying to do so in a tent while you're scrunched down and trying not to touch the top and all that is very, uh, very cumbersome for me. And uh, and I know there's a lot of guys out there that are you know even taller than I am. And I think you'll be still be comfortable enough in here uh, to change clothes in the center of the tent without having to worry about headroom. Oh, and by the way, if you're a young adult, plenty of headroom. For them too. <laughs> hey, you're 10 years old. I called you a young adult. I thought you'd like that. On the outside of the tent, just below the four plastic windows that we looked at uh, from the inside, there are some vents. Now, we're doing this review in January of 2021. So we didn't need to have these vents open last night. <laughs> now, if I was running the uh, running the propane heater, perhaps I would have. But as you can see, these are Velcroed all the way to the bottom, so that in a in a rainstorm and you want to put that down, that rain is going to run right past here, and that was pretty solid. On the sides, the window is zippered which allows a pocket here so that you can pull this out. And once again, uh, it has these guy lines. So when you pull this out, you're gonna have good protection to keep the rain from coming on the inside. And then, if you wanna open it up all the way and there is no inclement weather, you can roll these up with these little uh, barrels right here, barrel holders, and have a lot more ventilation to come in through the bottom and then come back out through the top where we looked at uh, earlier in the review. So there's four of these all the way around. 
obviously in January I'm not going to test the ventilation. It was cold enough last night, but uh, this should be pretty good for multiple multiple seasons. All right, now let's talk about the guy lines. The older version of this tent, there were some reports that uh, the connection here to the tent would rip out where it was sewn. And I, I don't have an old version to compare against, but the one thing I noticed about these guy lines when I put them out is they are a more shock corded type material versus uh, very uh, static guy lines. And, you know, as you've probably seen at points of this interview, it's pretty breezy today. Uh, and it, it kind of comes and goes in some, some gusts, some uh, up around 20 miles an hour. And so the tent is doing good. Haven't seen any uh, problems with that. And I suspect that the newer design has incorporated some elasticity in the guy lines to accommodate for that because, you know, it's a pretty good uh, size print right here for the wind to kind of to, to hit. So uh, I believe this is an upgraded uh, feature on here and so far uh, it, it held up in, in, in our initial testing without any problems. The other thing that we noticed last night, and you can't see this during the daytime, is that all the guy lines were already attached to the tent. So I did not have to uh, put this together at all and they uh, are reflective. So when we were uh, you know, coming in at night last night and the flashlights hit it, uh, you could easily see these, these guy lines out here. So uh, all in all, uh, pretty good design on this. And now to continue on with the, the guy line, you can see down here where I have it staked to the ground. Uh, you know, then it comes up. It has these little what I, I call them store-bought trucker hitches. <laughs> then it comes into this uh, round type grommet, and then you'll see it attaches there to the tent, goes back through this grommet, and then it's gonna run up to another grommet up here on the tent, and then it goes up and connects to your rain hood up there. So, uh, it was very nice that they had this already strung up, otherwise you know, your first use of the tent would have been probably very frustrating. Uh, and it ensures that everything was, was put together correctly. And in doing so, I believe it really helps get this and pull the teepee out so that you have the maximum amount of room utilized on the inside of the tent. Welcome to your teepee. Well, thank you, sir. And now here's one of the other great features. Uh, not only does it come with a fine young man to open the doors for you. Okay, no, he's, he's all mine. Uh, actually, there's a door right here that you can come in. And there's a back door. So it has a front door and a back door. Now, this would be really good uh, during a summertime uh, type camping trip where you could open up those two doors and get some really good cross ventilation. Uh, you can leave the doors open and here's a no see mesh uh, to keep the bugs out. Now, one of the things I did notice about, uh, about the doors here is on this particular mesh, you can zip that closed, but the, the tray here, let me get out here so you can see this better. Once you uh, zip the no see mesh, across here, the, the tray here that holds the rain out, there's nothing else to uh, zip the, the door to. So, eh, not really that, that big a problem. It overlaps good enough to keep uh, rain and all that out. Uh, the one thing I didn't like is if you were in a place where you didn't need this no see mesh and you just wanted to take it up and out of the way, well, the little, the little barrel here you, is in the center of the door and the no see mesh. So you can take the door and use it out here, or you can close the door and use it to tie back the no see mesh. But because it's in the center, it's really difficult to get both of them closed at the same time. 
Uh, so it would have maybe been nice to have one of, on the inside and outside of that so that no matter uh, which configuration you wanted, uh, you know, door pull back only, no seam pull back only, or both pull back at the same time, uh, you could have a few more options uh, for your door configuration. So a uh, small thing, but thought I'd mention it. And just to kind of show you, here's what I'm talking about. The barrel is right there in the center. And so if I fold the no seam mesh back over along with the door, there's my barrel is inside the material here and I can't pull it through in order to tie it back. Uh, I think I'd put two of those on there if, uh, if I was the engineer. All right, that's gonna do it for this review on the Guide Gear 14 foot TP. And all in all, uh, I like it. I like tents that are somewhat unique and this one is uh, unique. You put that in the campground somewhere and you know, a lot of people will uh, probably, probably be interested in it. Uh, and it's a lot lighter than that canvas TP with the uh, 18 cedar 14 foot poles we had to tote around. <laughs> so uh, all in all, uh, you know, we've only used it, uh, we've only set it up a couple of times, so we still have a little more to go on it. But our initial impressions are, overall, uh, I pretty much like it uh, for the size and the weight uh, and the uniqueness, uh, the features with the windows, the vents. Uh, like I said, I, I do wish there were a couple of uh, different things. I wish you could tie back the uh, no sim mesh and the uh, door flaps at the same time. Uh, the the hook, I'm not sure if that was a design feature or not. I really want to, would like to have that turned around, and I'll probably do that with a pair of pliers at some point. Uh, and then the fact that the uh, there isn't a flap that you could actually run a power cord, or uh, what we needed last night was a gas line from the outside in to a, to a portable heater. Uh, those are minor things. Uh, for instance, you could run the heater through the second door there and just... Uh, unzip it slightly. So uh, all in all, I wouldn't say those are uh, show stoppers. So overall, I'm going to give this a, what are you giving it? Uh, I'm going to go a seven. Well, I'm giving it a three quarter star. So that's a 7.5. So, okay. <laughs> and we did not discuss this. I wanted to see what he thought. Uh, I was on the eight. Yeah, for the most part, yeah, seven or an eight. Yeah. Once you split the difference and go seven and a half, you'll be just like yeah. me. Okay, <laughs> seven and a half. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going three quarter thumb up on uh, that. Uh, and I would kind of lean a little more towards thumb up, like, except for a couple of these little features. They're not really show stoppers, but uh, would I buy this tent again? You bet I would. So that's gonna do it for this product review. And we'll see all you turkeys on the next video. Let's go inside and get warm. I'm cold. Get out of here. <laughs>